how does the kneading method impact our gluten? Hi, I'm Sergio, I'm a professional pizza trainer here in France and in this video we're gonna compare the three main kneading methods and analyze the impacts on the gluten. In particular, we're gonna focus on kneading by hand, kneading with a domestic stand mixer and kneading with the Sparrow mixer. We're gonna focus on three main parameters to evaluate the impact of those methods. And those parameters are quality of the gluten, kneading time, and the heat transfer to the dough. First thing we're gonna do is to look at the test condition for those three tests. When this video was recorded, it was the middle of the summer, so the ambient temperature was 28 degrees. The three doughs have an hydration of 66%. And the flour used, which will help us understand the absorption capability, was a type 00 or TIPO00 with the W index of 330. Even though the overall kneading time will be different for the three tests, the first analysis for the gluten was done after 12 minutes so that we can evaluate basically how the gluten looks like with the same kneading time. When kneading by hand, we typically start with water in which I've dissolved the yeast, and then I add some flour and salt, and finally the rest of the flour. Here I just use a spoon for the initial part before moving on using my hands. I continue kneading directly on the work surface, and the goal is to evaluate the gluten network that has formed after 12 minutes. So here we go after 12 minutes, and we're gonna evaluate the gluten network. As you can see, it's still very weak, it breaks really easily and doesn't have much elasticity or extensibility. So what we're gonna do is to take a 30 minute break and use the self-evolving properties of gluten, which actually help us form gluten during this 30 minute break. When kneading by hand, the pause is the only way to allow the gluten to form itself and to form a network like the one that you see in the video. The temperature of the dough at the end of kneading here was 25 degrees. I didn't note exactly the temperature of the water and the flour as I did for the other types of kneading, but in general we know that kneading by hand only adds around 3 degrees. After the resting, here I'm just gonna fold the dough a few times and then the dough is ready. Stand mixers are known for the significant amount of heat that they transfer to the dough during kneading. So here, the temperature of the flour was 14 degrees, as I left it for a bit in the fridge before starting. And the water was very cold, around 3 degrees. You can even see some ice cubes. The goal is to start with a very cold dough to compensate for the high heat that will be given by the mixer and also the high ambient temperature that was of around 28 degrees. Here the dough is between 13 and 15 degrees. In this first part I'm starting with a low speed, then I will add the salt and increase the speed of the mix. I'll let my mix run at the maximum speed and after 12 minutes of total kneading we're going to analyze first the temperature, we are at 21 degrees, and the gluten network, that here it's better than the one obtained when kneading by hand. As you can see, it's still a gluten that is not quite strong enough and still lacks elasticity and resistance. So we cannot stop after 12 minutes, but we will continue kneading. Here, we'll continue for another five minutes at almost maximum speed, with the aim of forming the network even better. Kneading for an extra five minutes will give us a significant increase in temperature, 29 degrees, as you can see. But now we have a perfectly formed network thanks to those extra minutes. As you can see, gluten is smooth, strong and elastic. When kneading with a spiral mixer, we don't need the same temperatures for the flour and the water, as the spiral mixer heats the dough considerably less. You can see the temperatures for the flour and the water here on the screen. This first part of the kneading process, the aim is to structure the gluten well. Then we add the salt and increase the mixer speed. At this point, we gradually add the remaining water to achieve 66% hydration. After 12 minutes, the dough is ready with a final temperature of around 25 degrees. 
we can see a perfectly formed network in terms of strength, elasticity and extensibility. So after 12 minutes, we have formed a perfect gluten network. It's now time to analyze the results of those three tests. After 12 minutes of kneading, we saw that kneading by hand and kneading with the stand mixer did not produce the same gluten network in terms of elasticity, extensibility and resistance as the one obtained with the spiral. The key is in the mechanical energy that each kneading method transfers the dough. The spiral mixer transfers this energy in the most efficient way, resulting in a perfectly formed gluten network within 12 minutes and also a dough temperature of around 25 degrees by the end of kneading. The stand mixer is a much less effective at forming the gluten network. This can be seen in the kneading time, which is five minutes longer, and especially in the final temperature of the dough, which reaches 29 degrees before we get to a well-formed gluten network. When kneading by hand, the amount of energy transferred to the dough is much less than the other kneading methods with the machine. This also explains the slight increase in dough temperature. Therefore, to achieve a well elastic and resistant network, it's necessary to add resting time to take advantage of the self-evolving properties of the gluten and finally achieve a well-formed gluten network as with the other techniques.